Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here, coming to you from Clear Lake, Iowa. And in early February 1959, a tragic event that changed history took place in this small community. The day the music died, Richie Valens, Buddy Holly, and J.P. Richardson, known as the Big Bopper, perished in a plane crash just on the outskirts of town after playing a show about a third of the way through their scheduled tour. I want to retrace the steps of that faithful day. Join me, shall you? On February 2nd, the entertainers would have made their way through downtown, about to arrive at the 11th night of the tour's venue. Right here at the Surf Ballroom, which all these years later still holds it's very vintage-esque. Look, and they have erected this structure, a memorial to those that passed. Not only the performers that took the stage inside, but also the pilot who also passed away on that small airplane. Their earthly life tragically ended 5.2 miles northwest of the Mason City Airport. The music, however, lives on. Seeing all this snow definitely gives an interesting ambiance of what it would have been like the same moment they were loading their equipment and about to go inside the venue through that door. Front entrance still looks the same and the ticket booth still remains. You would have purchased a ticket and made your way inside these doors to see the show. Few buildings in existence today represent a complete shift in our musical history. The surf is the bedrock of where the sound and attitude of rock and roll change forever. Each of their signatures located below their photos in a frame right here as you first walk in. Very distinct looking carpet and pineapples line the hallway as you make your way into the actual ballroom. This is it. There's the stage. It's like I'm stepping back in time. Almost as if it's been perfectly preserved as it was in the late 50s. Tucked away in the corner, of course, is the dressing room, which current day has been signed, the walls and the roof, by other performers who have come here not only to share the stage, but also leave their thoughts, condolences, and this is it, oh my gosh, this is the, I'm standing on the stage. There was only enough room for three passengers on the ill-fated flight, and the toying cost to decide on if Richie Valens would have the ability to share a seat also happened in this room. Pretty crazy to think about. Someone has drawn Mr. Buddy Holly right there, and above it, written a night to remember. They say the view from the stage was a packed one, a full house. Even many decades later, this coat check area is still operational whenever they have concerts. But I have to think back to that evening on how cold it was. How many people stood right here at this counter, paid a small fee to have their coats held till the end of the evening. The phone booth also still remains where Buddy Holly called his wife and Richie Valens called his manager. They would have both sat right there and used that exact phone, the last two phone calls they ever made. Not a lot of photographs in existence from the performance, but this is one hanging in the lobby and to the far left playing bass. That's Waylon Jennings right there. Country star Waylon Jennings. Dion and the Belmonts also performed, and because of the poor conditions of the tour and the accommodations, their drummer got sick, and Buddy Holly jumped on the drum kit to play drums for their set that evening. On that sheet of paper are the hand scribbled lyrics to La Bamba, and there's Richie's bow tie and the wallet he had on that tour. After he passed away, his mom carried that wallet for 10 years on her in mourning. Big Bopper's necktie and clothing lapel, if you look closely, it spells his name out. 
And here's his briefcase, a little notepad that he wrote lyrics and poems in. The set of cufflinks owned and worn by Buddy Holly right there in that case. A few other artifacts on display, including this guitar that was signed by all the performers that evening. The signatures have faded, but they have placed the actual guitar in a glass case on the top of the wall. This helps signify how sporadic their tour was. It just went all over the place. It was a very disorganized as far as the route went. They went from Duluth to Green Bay, down to Clear Lake, when really it was just like a whole conglomerate, like nothing was organized. They could have, they did a lot of backtracking. Here's the flyer, Monday, February 2nd, dancing 8 p.m. to midnight. And the coat check wasn't a dollar back then, it was only, it was only 10 cents. Of course, who could have guessed later that evening, tragedy was about to strike. For a short while, this venue was in danger of being demolished. Thankfully, in 2011, it was placed on the National Registry of Historical Places. So it will be here till the end of time, preserving history. Because of the very cold weather, the blizzard-like conditions, the tour was plagued from the beginning. The tour bus kept breaking down, heater kept going out, causing a lot of the band members to become ill, get sick, get the flu, and even get frostbite in their feet. They decided that a few of them would charter a plane and fly out of this airport. The pilot, his name was Roger Peterson. Of course, only four people total could board the plane, which means some had to go and take the surface streets, drive hundreds of miles in that freezing, icy cold tour bus. There's an interesting story about Waylon Jennings who gave his seat up to the ill, flu-ridden Big Bopper. Out of kindness, he let him have the seat on the plane, not knowing what would happen. And when Buddy Holly realized that his bandmate, Waylon, had given away his seat, Buddy jested out of friendship to Waylon Jennings, I hope that tour bus breaks down on you. And Waylon turned to Buddy and said, I hope your plane crashes. Something that he meant as a joke, but something he's had to live with all his life. They only made it about five or so miles past the runway after takeoff. Weather conditions were so bad, the snow was so thick, caused the plane to crash out here in this field. One gets the sense of what it might have been like that next morning when visibility was granted due to sunlight. It is serene and a lot of solitude out here off the beaten path to say the least. And they have placed the iconic glasses right there on those two posts. In memory of that event. Not 100% certain, but I believe farther down the fence line, way down there, is the exact precise spot. I have to walk I have to walk through the snow to get there though. Change of plans. It's just way, whoa, ah. It's just way too deep. Look how far down. I don't think I can walk it on foot. This is, this is some pretty, you can't even see my foot down there, wedged in the snow. Next best thing. Looking back on it, probably a good thing I did not walk out there. It seems the precise memorials people have left have been covered in the snowdrift. Right along that fence line is where the plane laid down. The day the music died. That's gonna do it for today from Iowa, a very snowy, Iowa rock and roll history. I appreciate you guys watching. I will see you in the next video.
This is so... I gotta get out of this. Vlog. Over.